It's a vlog. Hey everyone, how's it going? I am the worst about putting these up in a timely manner, because this is about Combo Breaker, just outside of Chicago and St. Charles, which uh, I got back from a few weeks ago. I got Combo Breaker cold right after, though, right after my battle with Pax Pox, just like a month or two prior to going to that. But uh, Combo Breaker has been on my bucket list for a while now. I've been wanting to go there for a very long, long time. Uh, there's a big KI presence there every year. I think the NRS guys are Chicago local. It's just an awesome tournament. They run uh, a lot of really cool stuff like auction tournaments, which I'll talk about in a bit, a mystery game tournament, where like every round just changes to some bullshit game. There was one year they did this most, <laughs> like the most hostile, like PvP oriented new Super Mario Brothers U thing. Uh, they did balls this year. It's a fucking terrible Genesis game, I think. Just a really, really fun time. Um, the venue itself was open 24 hours, so anytime at all you want to get casuals in, early morning, middle of the night, whatever, whenever you could, you could always find someone. Always stations available, always people playing and stuff. Uh, always people running sets. Uh, there was a separate ballroom that had its own arcade going. It was in the back half of the ballroom that they held uh, panels in. There were exhibitions, all sorts of stuff aside from like the main meat of the tournaments themselves. And it was it was everything that I could have hoped for, man. I, I didn't get to see as much um, downtown Chicago as I had hoped I would, but I'm sure I'll, I'll be back and I'll put some more time aside to see the city. Like, let me just talk about my tournament experience and then we'll get into some of the spectator experience too so as you can probably guess i entered ki any tournament i go to that has ki i will enter it uh so i entered killer instinct and injustice 2 which was at the time freshly released uh injustice there's very little for me to say about how i did in that i was woefully woefully underprepared for it, despite it being so new really just didn't put the time in uh, I had a really tough time against my Winner's Mash opponent, uh, this Green Lantern player. That I, after I lost, I saw another Scarecrow play the exact same matchup. Learned a little bit about it, because he was having uh, more experience, uh, more success, navigating the, the zoning, getting corner pressure going once he got in. Uh, my Scarecrow at the time could eventually work its way in, but my pressure is really, really off, uh, especially in a corner. It was not super on point. Uh, Killer Instinct, though. Killer Instinct was the game that I, I put more time into, but still less than I wanted. I had my first ever on stream match was literally the first match of the day against a dude named uh, Silent Sully. And I still want to run it back, but I haven't been playing KI since I got back from Combo Breaker because I'm just focusing on Street Fighter V right now and uh, Injustice 2 for Evo. But anyway, our match was really delayed because they had issues with the uh, console recognizing the DLC. Finally got that sorted out. We had our match. Uh, I thought I had him scouted as a Thunder player, so mentally I'm prepared for a Thunder matchup. And I talked to him prior to us getting up on stage, uh, and he was trying to scout me out too. <laughs> and he found my old uh, <laughs> my, my KI videos from when I first got the game back in January of 2016. Well, I was still climbing up to kill her. Uh, so we get up, and it turns out it's this, a Hisako mirror. I had him scouted wrong. He had switched his main at some point. <laughs> so we had a, a Hisako mirror. And the thing about Hisako mirrors, and a lot of mirror matches in general, is the person with deeper character knowledge almost always wins those mirrors. So I was a little nervous in the first place, and then he perfected my first life bar so I was like um, I, I was in shambles mentally I remember the biggest thought that had crossed my mind was like I cannot get perfected on stream like this so I started doing that thing where I like I just need a moral victory at this point to pull myself back in so I lost the first match really badly didn't get perfected uh, just the one life bar the next two I remember were also pretty lopsided, but I started making a couple of adaptations. It wasn't enough, but I felt like I at least lost respectively to the better player instead of just throwing it and forgetting how to play and getting completely dominated. He was definitely the better player though, 
Uh, I can't even blame that on nerves, because I calmed down a lot in games 2 and 3, actually. Like, I started out pretty nervous, but I, I got my composure right. Uh, he was he was just way better. His setups and his reactions especially were more on point, and I got predictable. It wasn't until, like, game 3, I think, that I, I tried some empty jumps, and that's just not acceptable versus Hisako. You can't not empty jump her sometimes. You have to kind of make her afraid to parry. And I should know that better. Like, I should not have taken that long to go to that. Uh, and I know I was getting parried way, way too much as well. But, like, we had a fun time up there playing. Like, we were laughing between matches and just fucking around. Sully's a cool dude. Uh, he found my email, offered to do some casuals with me at the event, and help me out with the mirror matchup and my Hisako in general during the event, but it wound up, uh, I think it wound up in my spam filter, so I didn't even get to see it until I got home. By the way, Sully, if you're watching, I know you tuned into uh, Gami. Uh, I will get a run back going after Evo. We can do like a first to five or a first to ten or something. Uh, I think I owe you for that Gami donation anyway, man. Uh, you've got crazy impressive Sako, man. Also, funny thing was, I found out later watching uh, the VOD on the bus back to the airport. They had our name switched on stream, so it looked like I 3-0'd him. <laughs> that helped my ego, at least. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they messed that up. We both really wanted to win the first round of winners, too, because our next opponent would have been uh, Justin Wong, who I didn't even know still played KI after Season 1. But he didn't show up for his KI pools, so Sully didn't even get the chance to beat Justin. He just got the DQ win moved on to uh, round three winners uh as for me uh in the lower bracket i beat a general ram player 3-0 and that's not too noteworthy thing with ram players is i noticed that they they really like to go ham and instinct and if you just stay calm you can honestly open up really easily with like not too much trouble uh there was someone else i can't remember the match too well because I was kind of cruising through losers until I hit this Maya player whose name I'm not quite remembering but I uh, it, it was such a tough fight he was a really really annoying Maya but like every loss is a, a learning opportunity right the Maya matchup is one that I, I struggle with and this was a prime example of why he was just all over the place couldn't really lock him down very, very well uh, I had a hard time getting in, had a hard time breaking, too. I couldn't get my setups going because I was afraid of uh, an uppercut coming out. So I talked to this dude afterwards about what I did wrong and how do I do better in this matchup. And it's basically about pressure and knockdowns. Like, that's always what it is with Hisako anyway, but especially here. Uh, Hisako is always scariest when you're on your back because she's got, like, the, this tremendous... Uh, Oki game, but I wasn't committing to that because I was afraid of Maya's, uh, Maya's uppercut. And what I found out was that the uppercut is not fully invincible on frame one like I thought it was. I think you can actually beat the uppercut if your timings are right. So that what that means is that my setups and my meeting timings were not tight enough. And that alone, that's like crazy valuable information that I would have had a hard time it, it would have taken me a lot longer to figure that out, just grinding it out on my own. But, like, that's st something so invaluable when you go to tournaments is just talking to people, especially after they beat you and just playing casuals with them and doing shit like that. Hey, why didn't this work? How do I do better in this matchup? Like, what do I need to be doing? How do how, how does my character make your character struggle? Or what do I what do I do? And just getting information that is not all that obvious. Like, that dialogue makes everybody better. That's why going to tournaments, even if you get blown the fuck up, is super valuable, because you always have something to learn. So, I found out my meeting timings were not completely tight like I thought they were. Um, also, even though those weren't tight, my backup plan really should have been, um, once I saw that that wasn't working, to actually condition the uppercuts and parry cancel my meaties. Uh, something I know that I never did in that match was meaty uh, possession, the, the much more active command grab, the one that sucks you in. Uh, I never meaty possessioned, 
and cancel that into a parry, which I 100% should have been doing, at least enough to condition her uppercuts, to condition her to stop uppercutting. I should say. Um, so that's how I got eliminated against this Maya player. This really, really good Maya. Then later, uh, I don't know who put Sully into losers. The Saku beat me on stream, but he told me that, uh, that that Maya was also the one who eliminated him from the tournament in lower in, in the loser bracket. Uh, I think their match was 3-2, so he figured it out better than I did, but still not quite enough. Uh, that Maya, I can't say enough, was so sick. I want to say that Maya went on to take uh, top 16, maybe top 32. I think top 16, though. That was my tournament life, though. Uh, not crazy happy about my performance, but at the same time, like, I can't be mad about who I lost to. Like, at EVO last year, I threw a set that I should have won, and I was salty about that. Because I knew that I was good enough to win that but I did not play up to my own standards. So I lost to somebody who I honestly feel I was better than. Because I, I played poorly. I played really, really poorly. But I didn't play like that here. And that's ultimately like what matters to me. But I, I cannot be disappointed with how and who I lost to here. Like they were definitely better than me. But like aside from just my tournament experience uh, playing, what about everything else? Uh, I missed an unfortunate amount of the auction tournaments. There are a bunch of them. I caught the tail end of the Injustice one. I wouldn't miss the KI auction tournament for the world. Uh, for those who don't know, the way an auction tournament works um, is someone like Tubbleware or, or someone will draw character names out of a hat and he'll, like for KI, uh, I think it's 16 characters. He'll draw the names of 16 characters at random out of a hat. He'll call the name out, start bids uh, in increments of a dollar, and then from there, like, say he draws Glacius, I'll throw my hand up for a dollar. Someone else will bid two dollars. Keeps going like that, going and going and going. Until no one challenges the bid. You win, you pay the cash up front, you win the character. That character is who you will play in the auction. So you're bidding on the character that you're going to play throughout the tournament. It's best of one. The prize is winner takes off or whatever gets raised during the bidding. So this 16 character KI auction tournament had a $1,200 pot. I think that's the biggest one uh, for any of the auction tournaments that weekend. And here's like one thing that makes these auction tournaments so fun while you're, while just the bidding is going on. You don't know if your main is gonna get picked or not because it's only 16 characters out of the entire roster. So if you wanna participate, you might not wanna wait until the last second to bid because you might never get your character. That and, like, maybe somebody else is just gonna troll you because you'll pay any amount for your character. That happened with, uh, someone who played Rash. Someone was dead set on winning Rash. So someone else just trolled him and kept bidding until Rash was up to $220. Forced this dude to pay $220 for Rash. And he did not win that tournament either. <laughs> so that's $220 down the, do down the drain. So the whole thing ended with uh, Wheels playing, I want to say, Gargos? Did he get Gargos? I think so. Um, and Water Horses, who got his main, Glacius. And they're two, like, insanely talented players. Both made top eight at KI World Cup. They're two of the best. And it ended, like, as heartbreakingly as it could because Wheels accidentally paused. Uh, Water Horses took Grand Finals off of this, off of this $1,200 uh, DQ pause and like everything else. Oh god, the mystery tournament, everything. I don't want to spend too long on it, except to say that it was all good. It was all good. Like, I don't think there was a bad grand finals or a bad top eight. I tried to catch as much as I could. So many scenes got their games rep too, and not just like the new stuff. There was CBS 2 there on the main stage, there was Soul Calibur 2, there was. Um, there was Vampire Savior. Skullgirls is a huge community in Chicago, so that game got it, it shine in a big way. Uh, Sunday's Top 8s started with Super Turbo, which is fucking awesome. Uh, Tekken was amazing, Injustice was amazing. Uh, KI uh, featured just ridiculous matches because it's KI and of course it did. It's the best game ever. Um, plus, like, the, the verbal 
crowd shitposting <laughs> chants led by Keats. The Ric Flair woos every time Kim Woo did like anything. Plus, we had like the hypest grand finals between uh, Valorax the Cinder and Wheels playing uh, Gargos and Saber Wolf. And I think he bust out Shinasako at some point. Someone did in that top eight. And people were pulling for Wheels so hard, like flipping out for his wins. And they made it to the, uh, the bracket reset. And there was one of the greatest all-time KI moments in there. Like, this impossible Saber Wolf comeback from a magic pixel of health uh, against all this zoning from, from Cinder. All he needed was Chip. And Wheels brought it back that it is so hard that people were, no joke, like, jumping out of their fucking chairs, wigging out. I'm pretty sure if there is crowd footage of that match, you will see me somewhere in the front row jumping up and sprinting up and down the road like in disbelief it was unreal wheels unfortunately took second in that his second time that weekend in a ki tournament man they put on like an amazing show it was such a good weekend for playing pools playing casuals watching all sorts of games hitting the arcade the artist alley the merch booth all this stuff it's like a hybrid fighting game tournament and convention uh, I took Sheen's recommendation to check out Portillo's local uh, Chicago fast food chain. It was pretty good. The resort that I was staying at was gorgeous. It's a place called the Pheasant Run Resort. Three pools, uh, gorgeous like topiaries and golf courses for miles. I had this lovely, lovely view from my hotel room as soon as I threw the curtains open in the morning. The event provided a free shuttle from O'Hare to uh, this place in St. Charles. Met Robert Paul, whose work as a photographer I really immensely respect, and I uh, took some of my some of my favorite ever tournament photos there and learned some techniques from him too. So that was a joy. It was just complete joy. Combo Breaker is 100% gonna have to go on my list uh, with both like Pax East and Pax West of yearly visits. As for what's next, uh, I'm gonna be at Evo. Evo's coming up in mid July again in Vegas. I'll be there playing Street Fighter and Injustice 2 and any Killer Instinct side tournaments that go down and enjoying the electric atmosphere of the Sunday Arena file, uh, Finals in the Mandalay Bay Arena. And that's it for this blog. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.